Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Rail Splitter Athletics Report. And a lot has gone on since we last spoke here on the uh, weekly show. Of course, the LMU baseball team with a big uh, weekend sweep last weekend over uh, the nationally ranked Wolves of Newberry College down in Newberry, South Carolina. Congratulations to the LMU baseball team. They also split, or actually uh, lost a single run game to Lee University in non-conference play this week at home. Uh, that was a 9-8 to eight final. Lady Railsplitter softball team sweeps a doubleheader this week over King University here at home on the Dorothy Neely in their uh, home season opener. And the uh, Lady Railsplitter lacrosse team also with a victory as well as uh, the uh, men's lacrosse team uh, in uh, good form this week. Railsplitter tennis teams, big victories up on the road in Georgetown, Kentucky up there uh, just north of the border a couple hours, and uh, congratulations to Benny Collins and his teams. And, oh yeah, I forgot, the LMU men's basketball team won the SAC tournament. We're going to talk about that more with Josh Schertz when we return right here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Stay with us. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrigan and Middlesbrough has your fresh interest at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwiches or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner you're after, choose from a wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches that are all made specifically to order. Serving a crowd, Subway also has sandwich planners, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie planners. Be it dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. 368 Catawba Avenue in Harrigan and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. You love your car or truck? Let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The wheel deal. The Soapy J. Or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's express car wash open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. Whether institutional case good or architectural woodwork, Nolan Products Incorporated of Knoxville has been serving East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, and Southeast Kentucky since 1958. From concept to finish, Nolan Products custom builds to the highest quality standards to meet your facility specifications while using only the finest materials available. Nolan Products has been serving and meeting the needs and requirements of general contractors and architects in East Tennessee and surrounding area for more than 55 years. Nolan Products Incorporated, 912 4th Side Street, Northeast, Knoxville. Welcome into the 2016 NCAA Southeast Regional Preview Show. I'm your host, Adam Haley. Over the next couple of minutes, we're going to take a look at the eight teams that have made the 2016 NCAA Southeast Region Tournament and the first round matchups on tap for Saturday, March 12th, inside the Tex Turner Arena in Harrogate, Tennessee. This season's NCAA Southeast Region will be the second to be hosted by Lincoln Memorial University and the second inside the 5,000 seat Tex Turner Arena. Eight teams will make the regional field, four of them from the South Atlantic Conference, three from the Peach Belt Conference, and one from Conference Carolinas. We'll start our preview with the first game on Saturday between the sixth-seeded University of Montevallo Falcons from the Peach Belt Conference against the third-seeded Wingate University Bulldogs from the South Atlantic Conference. The Falcons are coming into the tournament after losing in the Peach Belt Conference semifinals last Saturday. Montevallo is 19-9 coming into the Southeast region and will be making their 7th consecutive NCAA appearance in their 11th in the past 13 years. The Falcons are led in scoring by first-team All-Peach Belt Conference selection and All-Peach Belt Tournament team member Terrell Lipkins, who averages 21.7 points per game, which is also fourth best in the Peach Belt. Lipkins will be helped by Bryant Orange, who was selected as second-team All-Peach Belt. Orange will enter the tournament averaging 16.5 points and 7.1 rebounds per game. The head coach of the Falcons is Danny Young, who's in his 13th season at Montevallo. Young and the Falcons will be looking for their ninth Sweet 16 appearance overall in their third straight. Montevallo lost in the Sweet 16 last season to Mount Olive. Wingate's coming into the tournament having lost the South Atlantic Conference Championship this past Sunday to Lincoln Memorial. The Bulldogs will enter the tournament at 22-9 and, and will be making their 10th trip to the Big Dance, but their first since 2013. 
The Bulldogs will be led by all sack second team and all sack tournament member Isaiah Curtin, who averages 14.3 points per game. He'll be helped by Mike Bayaz and Anthony Doyle. Bayaz averages 13.2 points per game while also being named to the SAC all freshman team as well as all tournament team. Doyle started all 31 games for Wingate while averaging 10.2 points per contest. The head coach of Wingate is Brian Good, who's in his eighth season at the helm of the Bulldogs. Wingate will be looking to duplicate their 2007 season in which the Bulldogs advanced to the Elite Eight. This will be the first matchup ever between Montevallo and Wingate, according to both of the school's websites. Game two on Saturday will take place at 2.30 p.m. We'll match up the Conference Carolinas champion and second-seeded King University against the seven-seeded Lenore Ryan University from the South Atlantic Conference. Lenore Ryan is into the NCAA tournament for the first time in seven years. The Bears have been the most rested of any of the teams in the Southeast region as they last played on March 2nd when they lost to Newberry in the South Atlantic Conference quarterfinals. LR enters the tournament at 19 and 9 and will be led by South Atlantic Conference Player of the Year Keenan Palmore, who led the sack with 22.1 points per game and 9.4 rebounds per game average. Palmore leads the nation with four triple doubles on the season. Helping Palmore will be Will Perry, who was selected as all sack second team. Perry averages 17.7 points per game. The Bears head coach is Ryan Odom, who's in his first year as a head coach. LR will be looking for their first NCAA tournament win since 2008. King is into the NCAA tournament for the second time in school history. The Tornado finished their season with a record of 25-6, and, and they finished as the Conference Carolina's regular season and tournament champions. King is led by all-Conference Carolina's first team and tournament MVP, C.J. Good, who will come into the tournament averaging 17.1 points per game. Hunter Laveau will also be a player to watch as he comes in averaging 14.8 points per game. Laveau was also selected as All-Conference Carolina's first team in All-Tournament team. The Tornado are led by Coach George Pitts, who is in his 10th year at King. Pitts was named the Conference Carolina's Coach of the Year this season. King will be looking for their first ever NCAA Tournament victory as they lost in the first round in their only other appearance back in 2012. Lenore Ryan and King have met three times in their history with the Tornado winning all the matchups. The last time they met was 1927 when King defeated Lenore Ryan 27 to 24. Session two on Saturday will begin at 5.30 p.m. with the top seed in the Southeast region, top ranked Lincoln Memorial University from the South Atlantic Conference when they'll face eight seeded Lander University from the Peach Belt Conference. Lander comes into the NCAA tournament after defeating Augusta in the Peach Belt Championship in double overtime. This will be the Bearcats fifth appearance in the tournament, but their first since 2007. Lander will be led by second team all Peach Belt and Peach Belt Tournament MVP J.R. Washington, who will enter the tournament averaging 19.7 points per game. Washington also pulls in two and a half steals per game, which was good for tops in the Peach Belt. Third team all Peach Belt member Tobias Hose is second on the team, averaging 14.4 points per game. The coach of the Bearcats is Steve Roberts, who's in his first year at Lander. The Bearcats will be looking for their first NCAA tournament win since 1999 when they advanced to the Elite Eight. Lincoln Memorial is top seed in the Southeast region for the second straight season, and this season they'll start the tournament as the number one team in the nation and on a 19-game winning streak. This will be the Rail Splitters' sixth straight trip to the tournament. They'll enter with a 29-2 record after setting records throughout the season in the South Atlantic Conference. They'll be led by first-team All-SAC in All-SAC tournament team selection Jarrell Simmons, who averages 20.7 points per game. All-SAC first-team selection Luquan Choice adds 17.4 points per game, while All-SAC second-team member Jalen Steele adds 16.5 points per game. The Rail Splitters, as a team, come in as the second-scoring offense in the nation, averaging 96 points per game, trailing only West Liberty. The head coach of the Rail Splitters is Josh Schertz, who is in his eighth season at LMU and is the second winningest active coach by percentage on the Division II level. LMU will be looking to advance past the second round for the first time in school history. Now this will be the first ever meeting between Lander and Lincoln Memorial University. The final game of the day on Saturday will pit the fourth-seeded Queens University Royals of the South Atlantic Conference against the fifth-seeded Columbus State University Cougars of the Peach Belt Conference. Columbus State will be making their second consecutive NCAA tournament appearance and their 12th appearance in school history. The Cougars will enter this year's tournament at 21-7 after winning the Peach Belt Conference regular season title. 
Columbus State is led by all Peach Belt first team member Cam Baker, who averages 20 and a half points per game. Brent Jackson also carries part of the load, averaging 16.6 points per game, and he was named to the all Peach Belt second team this year. The Cougars led the Peach Belt in scoring average, averaging 86.3 points per game and in field goal percentage, shooting 49.5% on the season. The head coach at Columbus State is Robert Moore, who will be making his third trip to the NCAA in his sixth season. Moore was named co-coach of the year in the Peach Belt this season. Columbus State will be looking to advance to their third Sweet 16 and their first since the year of 2000. 26th ranked Queens University is in their ninth NCAA tournament in their first since 2011. The Royals were knocked out of the South Atlantic Conference tournament in the semifinal round last week by Wingate. Queens will enter the tournament with a 24-6 record on the year. The Royals are led by All-Sac first team Rob Lewis, who leads the team with 18.2 points per game, and All-Sac first team Sean Morgan, who averages 17.4 and is second in the nation in field goal percentage, shooting 69.9% on the year. Queens head coach is Bart Lundy, who's in his second stint as the head man in Charlotte. Lundy set the school record for wins by a coach at Queens earlier this year, surpassing Dell Lair. The Royals will be looking to duplicate their 2001 uh, team that went to the Elite Eight. This will be the first matchup ever between Columbus State and Queens, according to both of the school's websites. Now that you know about the teams, we want to let you know if you're coming into Harrogate for the tournament, everything you need to know about the area should be located on the NCAA Southeast Regional homepage, which is located at LMURailsplitters.com. In addition, the LMU Sports Network will bring you every play from the opening tip on Saturday to the time one lucky team cuts down the net and punches their ticket for the Elite Eight in Frisco, Texas. Now get out your dance shoes because the big dance is here. I'm Adam Haley, and this has been your 2016 NCAA Southeast Regional Tournament Preview, and we'll see you Saturday afternoon live inside the Tex Turner Arena. Established in 1982, Dixie Roofing Incorporated of La Follette has been the industry's leader in commercial roofing throughout Knoxville, Tennessee, and surrounding counties for more than 30 years. From medical facilities to office buildings and educational institutions, Dixie Roofing has the experience, expertise, equipment, and know-how to handle roofing needs of any commercial structure, big or small. Dixie Roofing is also on the web at www.dixieroofing.com. Dixie Roofing Incorporated. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. that I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly, just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh and makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook, because when I grow up, I want to be a cook, too. I mean, he has the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. Welcome back to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Special thanks to Adam Haley for running down that regional picture. And coach, I know that uh, the regional tournament's coming up, but this past weekend over in Greenville, South Carolina, this LMU men's basketball team captured yet another South Atlantic Conference tournament crown. Yeah, it was uh, obviously a great weekend in Greenville. It's been something, uh, I think, you know, the last four years we've been fortunate enough to, to, to make it to Greenville and then play in the conference championship game. and, and uh, Anytime you know you, you you win a SAC championship, regular season tournament, it's it's really cool. And I was just really really proud of our guys, how they competed, how they played, and come in with. We talked about not a whole lot in terms of uh, uh, seeding or things like that to play for, but just playing for the sake of playing, competing for the sake of competing, and trying to win a championship. And these guys 
uh, did a did a you know a heck of a job over the course of uh, those two days down in Greenville. Tony Spinoza shooting that camera footage right there. I love that angle because that shows the crowd back there, Coach, and uh, all that crowd that you saw right there from about the midcourt line over was all LMU. It was almost like a home game. Yeah, it's incredible. You know, you look at us and we're we're by far the the farthest team away when you look at distance to Greenville, and uh, had uh, not even close. I think the the not only the the most in terms of uh, quantity of people, but uh, uh, when you look at um, how loud they were, how energetic they were, it was a tremendous atmosphere. And it was created, you know, by our, 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 you know, the fans. A lot of them were LMU students. The band was there, cheerleaders, all that. It was, uh, it was, it was great to see. It was great for for LMU. So it was, it was very, very cool. When you and I talked before we went on the set today, uh, we were talking about uh, the the tournament. Uh, and of course, uh, after the game, the, the shaking of the hands with uh, the opponents, Wingate. Uh, Brian Good, the, the classy guy that he is, uh, obviously uh, comes over and says, hey, that was, that was what we got. We gave it a good shot. But even though we didn't have our best game, I mean, I thought we, we responded well to what they brought to the table against us on, on Sunday. Yeah, we definitely, <clears throat> you know, I, I thought uh, Wingate, you know, to their credit, played really, really well. And we had. You know, we got out to 16-point lead at halftime. I think it got up to 18 or 19 in the second half. And I think we, we lost a little bit of focus and, and, and lost a little bit of competitive spirit right there. And, and, and that being said, you know, Wingate, uh, to their credit, really did, did an outstanding job. I mean, they, they played so hard and so well. And had they made a couple more shots, you know, they're, they're certainly in position to win that game. Um, but uh, we were, it was good for us probably in retrospect, not good for us to lose focus or competitive spirit, but good for us to, uh, uh, to be in a close game, be in a game where you got to execute and, and get stops down the stretch. We hadn't been in a game with, where we played under some game pressure uh, in, in a long, long time. So that's something that as you get in the tournament uh, is a good thing uh, that to, to play in games where you got to execute down the stretch in a close game. The, the victory pushes you to 29-2 and two on the year, uh, probably the longest win streak in NCAA Division II men's basketball at the time. Uh, it also really kind of solidified LMU's uh, hope to uh, gain the, South, uh, the NCAA Southeast Region Tournament. I think we probably would have had it regardless, but uh, that one right there just kind of was true vindication. Yeah, I mean it was good to win it. We knew uh, once we once we beat Queens, you know, back uh, February 20th, that we had pretty much locked in the the regional host. There was no way anybody was going to be able to to catch us uh, with the boxes. Um, but from that point on, what we talked about that next week was trying to obviously finish the season undefeated in conference play and how how unique a deal that would be. And that was kind of the motivation for the last week. And then. You know, we talked about going into the conference tournament was a chance to chase a championship, a chance to uh, compete, and uh, you never want to, you know, you want to win everything that, that, that's, that, you know, you're capable of winning or that's possible out there. And, uh, you know, two, two things down, and certainly, um, you know, now it's on to the, you know, trying to win the Southeast region, and ultimately the ultimate goal every year is always to win a national championship. And, and uh, so, you know, a lot ahead of us, but certainly uh, uh, this group is, has cemented its legacy in terms of what it's done to this point, uh, now it's time. You know, we talked about it's been a great season, and it becomes a special season if you can perform in the in the NCAA tournament, and that's where where we are right now. Last week here on the show, and prior to the tournament, we found out that uh, Lou and Jarrell had earned first team All Conference honors, that Jalen had earned second team, and of course, uh, Dorian Penson had been named honorable mention All Conference. Now, that was kind of echoed in the tournament when you had. Jarrell, Jalen, and Lou all making the all-tournament team, and in reality, uh, Dorian probably should have been on that as well. Yeah, you know those those four guys have been the mainstays all year. When you look at uh, our consistency, the consistency that those four guys have performed with is is just unbelievable. Uh, you know, um, you know, I think the first game, uh, the backcourt combined for 75 points. Um, you know, obviously Jalen had 30 against Newberry and played played unbelievably well uh, in the semifinals. I think you know Jarrell had 19, Dorian gets 20 points, 13 rebounds, six assists, and um, just a just as, as a group of four. I mean, there's a you know there's a reason we're number one in the country. There's a lot of, of factors in there. I think you know number one is is certainly the depth of the team and the ability to play through, as you saw, all weekend foul trouble, different things. But right with it would be certainly uh, those four guys in there. Uh, the level they've played at, which has been off the charts for, uh, for certainly for Luquan, Jarrell, uh, Jalen, and Dorian on a consistent basis all year long. So not only do you go to 29-2 and two with the win, not only do you earn the right to host the NCAA Southeast Regional, not only are you the number one seed in the region, 
Uh, as the stars align, number one gets beaten, number three or four gets beaten in the country, and LMU slides into the number one spot in the country, you're going to go in as the number one overall seed. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great honor, you know, to get in there and, and, and be, uh, you know, head in that deal. I don't think, uh, you know, it matters too much. It's a, it's, a, it's a, I don't look at it. I know people say, well, you know, does that create more pressure? You know, the, the pressure is created from the fact that you're playing uh, every game's a game seven. You're playing to, to, you know, for your life every single time, moving on forward. When the ball's tipped up, no one really cares who's number one, two, three, seven, seventeen, whatever it is. Everybody's just trying to play and, and find a way to advance to the next round. You're playing great opponents, and, uh, and so no one's going to pay that much attention. I do think, though, from a positive standpoint, it's great for recruiting. Um, it's great for uh, this team when you look at its legacy. Not only did it go undefeated uh, in the regular season, not only did it win the SAC tournament championship, it finished the regular season as a number one ranked team in the country. I mean, so it's a lot of things. And we've been number one. I think this is the fourth time overall uh, that we've been number one. So it's not a, a new thing for these guys, but it is the first time we finished a regular season as a number one team in the country. So should be good. And, and again, a feather in these guys' cap, a tremendous accomplishment, but uh, it, it won't mean anything starting Saturday. It won't help us or hurt us, I think, coming Saturday. Exactly. And with that in mind, the NCAA Southeast Region Tournament comes to town. Eight teams throughout the uh, Southeast United States are going to converge here on the Tex Turn Arena floor. And there you see the bracket, LMU and Lander. That'll actually be game three. The opening game of the tournament is going to be uh, the uh, uh, Wingate game versus uh, Columbus, I uh, beg your pardon, versus Montevallo. Then you got King versus Lenore Ryan, LMU versus Lander, and Queens versus Columbus State to round out the afternoon or the evening, if you will. And coach, this is going to be a powerhouse of a tournament. It really is. You know, when you look at this, uh, this eight teams, what's unique about our region is that those eight teams were the top eight teams in the region like the last two or three weeks. There's no Cinderella, there's no team that, oh, they won their conference tournament, they were out of the top ten, and here they are, like North Greenville last year. Uh, every year I've been in it, there's always been a team or two that just was a Cinderella. You know, the, the eight seed this year, uh, all they did was finish a game out of first place in the Peach Belt regular season and win the Peach Belt tournament championship. So, the, the, you know, I was telling this to, to Scotty, the last time that happened was never. <laughs> Never was a was a Peach Belt, you know, tournament champion, uh, uh, the eighth seed in the tournament. It just shows the depth of the region, the depth of the South Atlantic Conference. Uh, but it'll be a, as difficult a 1-8 game as, as you could possibly have because of a uh, Lander team that's won 22 games. And obviously going through the Peach Belt is extremely battle-tested. I want to show something else. If we can pop that bracket back up real quick. LMU is going to go into this tournament as the number one seed, number one team in the country. Queen's still nationally ranked in the 22 or 23 spot, something like that. But uh, what a lot of people don't know is Kings and King and Wingate are both catching votes for the top 25, so they're right there on the bubble. And, you know, the last time that I can remember four teams that highly ranked in the same regional tournament, again, I, I don't know that LMU was part of the uh, southeast region when that took place. We might have been part of the south region in the Gulf South. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a terrific field. Uh, you're going to see great games. I mean, Saturday, if you're a basketball fan, and, and LMU, obviously, we want to have as many people there at 530, but if you're a basketball fan, from basically uh, noon to about 10 o'clock at night, you'll be in heaven because you're going to see uh, unbelievable talent, great teams, great coaches. Should be really one, all four games should be really, really close, really good teams. Again, it's just uh, the margins will be razor thin. It should be a, a basketball fan's dream uh, here uh, this Saturday. Uh, it's going to be a definite uh, an event you want to attend. And I, I'll tell you right now that the NCAA Southeast region has really made the ticket prices more than fair. You're talking about $5 per session. There's two games in the session. That's the uh, 12 o'clock and 2.30 game on Saturday, then the 5.30 and 8 p.m. tip-offs between LMU and, and their opponent and Queens and their opponent. And uh, you're talking about two fifty a game, folks. You're not going to find basketball, especially at this caliber, for that kind of price. $5 a session, $10 day pass for the first day. You're talking about $5 for the second day, and I think $5 for the third. Coach, I know that you'd love to see a great crowd out here in attendance for this weekend. Yeah, definitely love to see everybody come out and support us. It's a great opportunity to host. Um, hope we get the, the, you know, the energy. We'll feed off it, and uh, uh, certainly it's a huge weekend for us, a huge weekend hopefully for the community, and hopefully we'll work together and, and create a great environment Saturday at 530 uh, against Lander. 
Josh, exciting time here at LMU. Again, congratulations. Thank you for what you've brought here to Lincoln Memorial University in terms of this program over the last eight seasons. This one's not yet in the books, and I really do believe that this one is one that's going to go into the history books here at LMU as uh, the greatest ever in the NCAA era. So, again, congratulations. Good luck this appreciate week. Appreciate it, Russ. Thank and you. And hopefully into Tuesday. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Josh Shirts of the Rails Putters take the floor on Saturday at 530 Join us. We're going to be back right after this on the Rail Spitter Athletics Report. Stay with us. Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite, because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary, the perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Join the Vibe Broadband TV revolution. Vibe gives you the freedom to choose with loads of new channels like Up TV, The Hub, The Blaze, and Cubo. Vibe's Watch TV Everywhere feature gives you the freedom to watch participating channels just about anywhere, anytime, on any device. And Vibe Broadband Speed gives you the freedom to power internet TV services like Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, and Google Chromecast. Join the TV revolution at vibebroadband.com. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen and I am your dividend. Exciting times this weekend here on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University, but that's not all that's going on. We got uh, lacrosse going on this weekend. LMU baseball team playing a three-game set that gets underway Friday evening with Wingate University, so do join us for that. Uh, in fact, I'm told we'll be covering that baseball game through the LMU Sports Network on uh, Friday. Not on Saturday, though. We will be involved completely with the tournament, the entire tournament being televised here locally and, of course, through the World Wide Web and the LMU Athletics website. You can click on the LMU Athletics website for the video streaming link to that if you are with one of the other schools or you're not going to be in the area where you can pick up the local coverage on LMU Community TV and the LMU Sports Network. Again, best of luck to Josh Shirts and the Rail Splitters. They tip off at 5.30 on Saturday. Uh, we'll have pregame coverage beginning at around 5.10, maybe 5.20, something like that. LJ Kilby and I will have the call. Adam Haley and Dennis Klein will also be on the air in games two and four on Saturday. Uh, that's uh, going to be uh, obviously some pretty good competition. So come join us in the Tex Turner Arena, folks. You will not find better basketball anywhere in the area. And the way Tennessee and Kentucky played this year, you may not find better basketball in the SEC. So uh, without a doubt, we've got some great stuff coming to the uh, LMU campus, and we want you to be a part of it. Tickets again, $5. You can buy those at the main gate of the Tex Turner Arena at the box office, and that's per session. You'll get you into two games, and uh, you can get it for the whole day for 10 bucks. Until then, I'm Rusty Peace. Good night, everybody, from the Rail Splitter Athletics Report.